Hi, thanks for joining me again. Um, since the incident last Friday, when I uh, attempted to go and gather up some personal belongings from the home that I still own with the narcissist, uh, things have been a little rough. My therapist did describe him as a trigger. Someone asked me about PTSD. I'm going to guess that based on my reaction and her using the word trigger that I may have a bit of that. I did read an article uh, referring to it as CPTSD. Um, that is something that people who have been emotionally and mentally abused um, can um, suffer from. Things you see, hear, you know, whatever can remind you, um, cause a flashback, uh, a negative memory, um, nightmares, um, all sorts of different things um, <clears throat> that can take you back to those times um, that were um, traumatic. And so that happened last week and I'm going to have to find a way to deal with that and control it in the future and work with my therapist on not giving him so much power over me um, like that again because that's truly what I'm doing. I was really um, sort of disappointed in myself. I was probably more angry at myself than even him um, on that particular day for letting him get the best of me again and that's truly what I did is I let him get the best of me. Um, he's not worth my time, my, my emotions, my aggravation, nothing. He's not worth any of it anymore and um, I have to try to uh, remember that and remain in control of that and uh, remain in control of my feelings to not let him rob me of any more emotions um, the way he's done for the last 24 years. Uh, <clears throat> since then someone did ask me about how is it that I could be in a new relationship after having been with um, a narcissist for so long and um, uh, it was not posed in a um, judgmental fashion or um, you know with any scrutiny I, th I think it's just someone inquiring and wanting to know how do you move on and I can respect that question because for uh, years when we would have those big blowouts and I'd want him to leave or I'd want to leave myself, which of course I never would. I would not leave my children, not leave my family. Um, but I thought about it, I thought, well, if he leaves, so huh, how much worse can it be? I'm already alone, you know, in my mind, I was alone. And so, um, you know, I often wondered, uh, I believed his lies and I had it in my head that, oh, you know, who's gonna want me? I'm an old washed up hag, I have all these kids, all this baggage, I'm gonna be alone. And so, um, you know, you, you let that get in your head. You let those voices um, get to you and control you. And I had that in my mind. But there were many times I thought, well, I'd rather be alone. I'm already sort of alone in many ways. And I'd rather just be alone than be with someone and giving myself wholeheartedly to this relationship and still feel alone. That's an awful feeling. Um, so I'm sure, um, that would pique someone's curiosity and um, make you wonder why, or how, not why, but how, how it is that you move on in, in a new relationship. And I read something recently that said, um, women leave mentally before they leave physically. And I did leave mentally many years ago. Um, I do recall um, speaking about one of the therapists that I saw, I don't know if, um, you've watched or remember or saw the video um, when I referred to this therapist I just remember a period in my life where I just did nothing but cry I just could probably filled buckets could have filled buckets with the tears that I was crying and um, this particular therapist told me um, that I was mourning my marriage <clears throat> that for me it was already over and I would say that was probably six to seven years ago and um, I did see other therapists after that. And before that, he wasn't the only one. Um, but we would never, we even saw a few together, but we were never in therapy enough for him to be diagnosed um, um, as a narcissist or with narcissism um, because it just, you know, he'd bail on me. We'd go a few times, he didn't like what he was hearing. 
that person was crazy or that person was a this or a that or a whatever. And so we never stayed in therapy together. I, of course, you know, would go alone. I would, you know, I saw a few. I journaled, I read books, I did it all. Um, I was, you know, just single-handedly trying to hold this whole thing together. And so mentally, I think I checked out a long time ago. I still gave of myself as a wife, as a mother, as a daughter um, to my entire family as much as I possibly could, 110% all the time. I, I ran in high gear. I did anything and everything to try to keep everybody happy. And I think part of that was also that facade because you know you're not truly happy, so you're, you're, you're putting on this big show um, to convince everybody that you are, including yourself. And so it was tiring. It was very tiring. Um, and so, yeah, uh, women leave mentally before they leave physically. I think I left about six or seven years ago, um, not knowing when or how the marriage would end, but just knowing I couldn't stay in it, not the way things were going, not the way he treated me and the way he made me feel, the way he treated the children, the way he spoke to them. Um, I just went through the motions. I was so caught up in, in being a mom and a wife and a daughter. Um, my father's health you know, was declining and I was very involved in um, his care and his appointments and, and traveling um, for work and things like that. So um, I, and I will share more of that um, because um, that has a lot to do with my mother and her narcissism and how, how um, that all unfolded after I lost my father. It's uh, quite the story. Uh, on top of all of this, can you imagine? So um, I will share all that. Uh, but someone asked about my new relationship. And so it uh, started some time ago, um, not technically. Um, I am a pilot. I've always wanted to be. My father was a pilot. Um, it was not his career. My father was actually an entrepreneur, a self-made man. Um, but uh, during his younger years and then uh, later on, he maintained his licenses and was a pilot and um, obtained all the different ratings and so on. And so when I told him that I wanted to get my pilot's license, he was very excited. He understood the enthusiasm and where it was coming from. It was something I always wanted to do. And when my children were older and didn't require me um, driving them to practices and, and all the things that they needed to get to, I believe they had all graduated high school by this time. Um, I sought out my um, private pilot's license and I achieved it in six months. I had the world's best instructor and uh, we became fast friends. You learn to trust that person um, on every level, basically with your life. And uh, we formed a very close friendship um, during our time together flying. And I had a great respect for him as my uh, instructor. He had a great respect for me as his student. And so we remained friends. Um, we um, kept in contact from time to time, you know, checking in um, Facebook and so on. How are you doing? What's going on? I knew he was pursuing a career with the airlines um, and I was just going about my life being mom, wife, daughter, so on. Um, but the one thing that he was very aware of was the relationship with my father. Um, I spoke of my father constantly while we were flying um, due to the... Um, similarities um, with us both having that love of flying, my father and I, and um, my job, uh, which, you know, I worked with my father and spoke with him a dozen times a day and traveled um, for my job. Uh, and so he knew that my dad was the first person I called when I landed to discuss what we did that day, what I learned and how my, um, flying lessons were going. He was very excited about it and very proud. Um, and so um, we kept in touch uh, over the next couple of years. And when my father passed, um, John reached out to me to offer his condolences. And um, I was going through a particularly bad time. I was taking uh, a real um, beating, if you will, emotionally, mentally. Um, from the narcissist and also from my mother who incidentally is a narcissist and um, of course at that time I didn't know these things I was just going through the motions I was just jumping through hoops trying to keep everybody happy trying to keep it all together take care of my mom on a personal level take care of the business take care of everything that my dad left behind and entrusted me with 
and um, and it was more and more difficult uh, each day that my dad was gone because he was um, he was the real source of support there. And I remember a friend saying, you didn't just lose your dad, you lost your best friend. And um, I didn't even realize it until she said that, and that was the truth. He was my best friend. He helped me through everything. He encouraged me. He, um, he gave me reassurance and positive words that no one else did. And so losing him was, um, It was so traumatic. And um, so John and I got back in contact with each other and he was a great source of support, always had some very reassuring words for me. Uh, knew that I was a very strong person, knew that I was a strong um, woman and um, knew how controlled I was and how disciplined I was. And to, uh, I think to see me just kind of <laughs> falling apart at the seams was um, difficult for him so he really tried to be uh, a shoulder for me and uh, our friendship developed into more than just a friendship and it was it, it all just happened at the same time I realized I no longer wanted to be in my marriage um, I couldn't take the mental and emotional abuse anymore um, eventually my mom um, my mom showed her true colors as well. Um, it culminated in some very, very big life changes for me. Uh, I will share all of that. I'm going to share all of that eventually um, as, as it all rolls out in this timeline. Um, my therapist has helped me through some very serious losses. Um, my father, my marriage, uh, my career, a lot of things have occurred. And um, all things that were sort of out of my control other than my marriage, but, um, I don't look back. I don't regret it at all. John's a wonderful person. He's loving. He's supportive. He uh, makes me feel loved and protected. I've never had anybody make me feel protected. I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel loved. I was with a narcissist for 24 years and I never felt loved or protected or safe. And I have all of those things now. I have a relationship that I never thought I would have. I, I'm just so blessed. Um, the narcissist would tell me that I was asking for too much, that I was asking for what people see in fairy tales or what they see in movies or what you read in novels. And that's just not how life is. And, um, it's like a fairy tale. The relationship I'm in right now is like a fairy tale. There are times um, that I'm just brought to tears. I'm so overwhelmed with gratitude that I have someone in my life now that loves me and cares for me the way John does. I never thought I would. I don't, I'm really not sure what I did to deserve it. Um, but he's truly a wonderful, loving man. He offers me reassurance constantly. He knows what I'm dealing with. He understands the severity. He understands that um, it's really this um, thing that no one talks about, that people really need to know about. And he supports what I'm doing. He supports that I share this. He supports um, that I do it because he knows that it helps me as well. I appreciate everybody's feedback. I appreciate everybody's questions. I appreciate everybody's comments. This helps me tremendously, and hopefully we can form a um, community, if you will, of support that um, really I don't think is in place the way it should be. Um, there are a lot of things, there's a lot of awareness out there for a lot of other issues, and I don't feel that this is one of them, and um, if we can support each other, we should. And so um, it, it's not always easy. I go to my therapist a lot with a lot of mixed feelings and um, a lot of um, concerns that I have after having been with a narcissist for so long and just um, insecurities, you know, and they're all unfounded. He's wonderful. He's never given me reason to 
question him or to question his love, to question his honesty, his sincerity, his integrity. Never. He's never given me reason to. It's all coming from the mental and emotional abuse that I endured and what the narcissist has, um, you know, implanted in, in my head, in my mind, in my ways of thinking, in my ways of seeing myself. And so that's something that I work on. And I can assure you that you will slowly get past it. It's a very slow process. And John offers reassurance constantly. And that's something you don't get from a narcissist. They just leave you in the dark. They give you the silent treatment. It's, it's just awful. And um, normal people aren't like that. Um, so as soon as you leave a narcissist, you will encounter uh, someone who's normal and they will make you laugh and they will make you smile and you'll wonder why you waited so long. Um, being with a narcissist is a very, very lonely place to be. And um, I stumbled onto an email exchange that I had with the narcissist. And this is going back, um, I don't know how many years ago. And um, I want to share that exchange in my next video, uh, at least little bits and pieces of it. Um, it's that whole twisting, turning thing, projection, you know, it'll, it'll sound familiar and I do plan on sharing it. So um, please join me for that. Um, see you then.